So instead of just saying that I'm going to work 12 hours a day, no, I'm going to work, let's say, six hours a day. But those are highly concentrated hours with okay. large breaks in between, which resets your energy to like 90%. Hey. Danny, thank you so much for being on my show, 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Definitely. So, you know, I, we, we, we edited this out, but a second ago, I said, thank you for having me on 20 Minute Leaders. So I think, <laughs> yeah. it just shows, you know, this is actually the 75th episode or so that we're, wow. that we're recording. So you would think that by then I would know how to introduce people. Well, I guess that's just <laughs> not the case. Uh, Danny, um, really, really interesting guy that I'm really excited to get to know you better over these next uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, you worked on, an, on a marketplace app called Saley with a good friend uh, of mine from the Teal Summit, a Forbes 30 under 30, now Forbes Tech Council. Talk to me a little bit about, about where you come from and how you even got into this entrepreneurial world. Cool, yeah. Uh, well, I come from a very far country in the Middle East called Lebanon. And... Um, this story um, actually started 10 years ago, but we have time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so of course, uh, at a, as a child, I was just obsessed with computers even before yeah. the internet. So we just um, got our first computer when I was seven years old, but I was more interested in uh, creating rather than just consuming, like playing games. It was fun, but I wanted to build something. Uh, so uh, the only tool I had back then was uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. And I just kind of find a way to build a simple games, like just multiple questions games on top of that. And this was my first encounter to programming. Um, later on, moving forward, I just went to a uh, computer engineering uh, uh, program, but I quickly realized that they're not teaching us anything practical. So all what we learned was, was theory. And um, I wanted to like build websites, mobile apps. Um, the iPhone just came out and mobile apps were just very, very early stage. And um, I remember I just couldn't afford to buy a Mac. So I went and, and worked as like a waiter at a barista actually as really? uh, at a coffee shop. Wow. Uh, so I, I made enough money to buy the Mac. And then the first thing I thought about is let me just build an app for them, for the coffee shop. And then wow. I just sold it to them and quit. And oh, started, very cool. Yeah, I started pursuing my career as a So um, you went from a waiter engineer. to building an app for the coffee shop and then you, <laughs> and then you quit as a waiter. And you, and you okay, and so, so then how, how do you get to, let's fast forward a little bit to Saley. How, how do you get to building this really incredible marketplace where at the end you, you actually merged with Mercari, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, for Saley, actually, it was uh, just hackathons at the beginning. Hackathons were still new concept. I just went there. I was just like, I won the first hackathon for some reason and then met this guy. Uh, uh, he was just 15 years old at, back then, but he was just very bright. And we decided right. to just team, team up and uh, started like hacking the judging criteria and making some prizes, cash prizes, splitting uh, them lovely. going home. <laughs> At some point, one of the judges was like, hey, you guys, I see you all the time in those hackathons just winning yeah. and doing nothing about it. Are you going to build something? And uh, we were like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so j we just um, bought a ticket, flew to San Francisco. And um, this is how all started. it all started. And Sadie was just like the last idea that won at a competition. We huh. decided to... It was just a marketplace to buy and sell secondhand items, but it so was So Sailing was actually a hackathon. It was a hackathon idea. A startup weekend idea. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, very cool. Um, and, and then um, it just started growing. Um, it, things worked out also somehow. Uh, the timing, I think, was very uh, good because mobile apps were just on the rise. And uh, it was kind of like a mobile eBay at that point. And lots and lots of uh, competitors were building those um, kind of apps at the same time and raising hundreds of millions of dollars just to grow up to something like OfferUp, uh, even before LetGo, um, 
uh, even much way before Facebook marketplaces and all of those. So it so was just- So what year are we money. talking about? So Saley was uh, the marketplace to buy and sell secondhand items. And uh, the timing was good for it to grow. And then after like six years of working on it, we ended up with uh, uh, joining Mercari. But so, uh, which, so when when did you start when did you start working on back in in, in 2013 2013 yeah oh yeah. wow okay so okay that's really an interesting time to start building mobile apps and marketplaces exactly exactly yeah okay we didn't cool. know back then but <laughs> of course <laughs> just of worked course. Out. yeah and so what was that experience you know growing the app from oh, one yeah. user yourself to <laughs> 500,000 users <laughs> yeah uh, that was very exciting times for us because we learned as we as we were going, um, we were just growing, um, um, uh, finding new ways to to do user acquisitions, to um, find our target market, who are the people who are going to use it, uh, to fight fraud and scammers. We yeah. got scammed a lot at the beginning, like those fraudsters but we learned as we like you know you lose a lot of money but you're T tell, tell me about one of those scams what, what, what were you scammed with one of uh, the uh, usually so so usually uh they get stolen credit cards and then they buy expensive items of our platform they finish the transaction and then at the end of the month stripe would be sending us like a, a, a ah. dispute and saying hey this credit card was stolen we're gonna take the money out of your bank account <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Stripe didn't have fraud detection back then. It was just very early. So we had to integrate uh, with other services to, wow. to figure that out. But by then we had, we've lost like $20,000 or something just because there was a delay before we knew it was happening. So, you know, but marketplaces really, you need, you need both ends of the stick. You need both the sellers and the buyers. Chicken and egg you need them, Yeah. Right. And, and you need them at scale in order to really, you know, build a, build a good experience. So how exactly. do you go about even strategizing how to get, you know, both the, to get really the sellers on, yeah. on this platform? Exactly. Yeah. Well, what we did was uh, we started at specific uh, cities. So New York City, for example, and even targeting specific kind of people, um, right. San Francisco, the techies, uh, like, you know, uh, each area with high population has um, a, uh, a good amount of uh, people uh, that usually sell and buy specific items. And this right. is how we initially started. And then it just expands as you go and grows. But the, the initial part is the hardest part to, to get. Definitely. No, I'm sure. Okay. So, so then you go and you are, and you're building this amazing uh, platform. How many people are you on the team? We were a small team of like five people. We didn't want to, to hire uh, people uh, just for the sake of, of ex like showing that yeah. the, the, the company is expanding or growing. And we were, we are um, very good at fast execution and, and um, getting the best out of every single person. So we were doing at least like the work of five to 10 engineers, for example, in another company, a big company, for example. Sure. Yeah. It's just the tools that we built. Like we built abstract layer later on, which got us into uh four study under 30. That was mainly because of Sally. We were like, Oh, look, so what, what is ab abstract layer? Okay. So, so it's a, an automation platform. Um, and we realized that we're building, those components and features for Saley. And a lot of things are just very similar if you look at it from a high level. So those are table views that you scroll through or grid views or like the data showing and interacting with it is very common across different apps, across different screens. So we just thought about an abstraction to it where instead of writing down or coding stuff, you can just do it in like, let's say uh, two lines of code, you can just do what thousands lines of code could do. And then this allowed us to, to build um, product and features and, and everything else. Till today, I still use it with really? our, our new startup. Um, it allows us to go for, uh, in execution from like something that would take a month would take three days. And hmm. this is a huge for anyone who's pursuing startups and trying to build fast. So is that like a, a package or a product? How exactly. Do you, how does it's, it work? it's a framework uh, where you just drag it into your uh, Xcode project in our case, which is for iOS. And then out of the box, it has 
so much things that you can do to just build the same uh, uh, data um, the binding and, and, and uh, viewing and interactions in seconds. Right. Okay. So then, so you build abstract layer and then and that gets you on the, on the Forbes 30 under 30. Congratulations. Thank uh, you so much. And you're and on, then, on the under 32, right? Yes. Yes. We can talk about you later. <laughs> and another time. Thank you. I, I can interview you. <laughs> Sounds great. And, and then, but, but so what, what is this uh, Forbes tech council that you're, uh, that you're part of? Mm -hmm. So uh, Forbes Tech Council is, um, they have very strict um, uh, requirements to get in, uh, whether it's on your uh, startup um, um, uh, revenue or, or uh, net worth or whatever the, the criteria is. And then once you get in, um, you start contributing to uh, Forbes Tech. Um, uh, so, so you're writing uh, tech articles, you're doing consultancies and uh, uh, there's also a, a huge forum where everyone from the industry are, are asking questions and everybody is giving their experience. Right, as a right. Team. So it's a huge network. Actually, it's a small network of like successful entrepreneurs and, and, and people in the tech industry sure. uh, that can help each other and help others by just um, sharing their knowledge outside. No, that, that makes sense. So, that, so what, what do you usually write about? What do you enjoy writing about? So for me, it's all about engineering productivity, for example. Really? I, I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so anything from uh, building tools to help you from the mentality, how to schedule your day, what kind of mm. things to tackle. Um, uh, so I, I care a lot about um, having like just one engineer on my team that can be 20x as other yeah. just like people who are employed at companies and are doing what they're told to without sure. even thinking of how can we make it faster? How can we build even better things? Definitely. So, so, talk, so okay, so, you know, I'm an engineer by profession as well. How, how do I increase my productivity? And to any other engineers that might be interested in this, what, what can I, what, what should I be thinking of when I prioritize and when I schedule my work day? Yep. Okay. Uh, that's a very good question. There are lots of different areas to tackle, but for example, um, what worked for me is having, I work from home. I've been working from home for more than a year now, uh, and I've done it even before. So what really works is discipline, having a specific daily schedule for yourself and going by. Very so, relevant in COVID-19 times. Oh yeah, yeah. So for example, for me, I, I usually wake up at eight, by myself without an alarm because I, I'm used to it. Um, and then I have my coffee and breakfast while having a conversation with my business partner to discuss the business in general and what we're gonna achieve in the next day, in this day. Um, then work for till lunch, then two hour break. I, I realized that taking a long break uh, resets my energy. So instead of just saying that I'm going to work 12 hours a day. No, I'm going to work, let's say, six hours a day. But those are highly concentrated hours with okay. large breaks in between, which resets your energy to like 90% instead of just trying to go through the day with whatever is left. And even I do that again, like at, let's say 6 p.m. If, if I still want to work more, I can just take a big gap of two hours, three hours and then go again three hours and those will be very high productivity slots. Okay, now that, that, that's just fascinating. I can and talk a lot more about it, but I, <laughs> I think we don't have enough. Time. Well, what I would love to also hear, uh, I, don't, I don't get to meet too many Lebanese entrepreneurs and I'd love to hear a little bit about the, the Lebanese tech scene and your interpretation of it, you know, coming from Lebanon, having the Silicon Valley experience, being a successful entrepreneur, and uh, how, so talk to me a little bit about what the eco ecosystem is like and what do you see your role, your role in it? Awesome, yeah. Um, what I can say about uh, Lebanese people is they're very ambitious. Uh, they're, um, they, the problem is they usually have to travel outside and then shine outside uh, because right. of the very limited opportunities that we have in our country. Uh, but again, the, the tech scene and the uh, startup scene is relatively big compared to the Middle East also in Lebanon. Uh, we, we do have um, 
uh, VCs, uh, lots of VCs and, and angels that help uh, the, this uh, ecosystem. Um, but the market is also very tiny. Like yeah. the Lebanese market is super tiny because we have a population of like 5 million. It, uh, credit card penetration is still low. Uh, so whenever you're building a, a startup in Lebanon, you're at least targeting the Middle East and not just Lebanon. And, right. um, and usually uh, people would just decide to travel uh, abroad, Europe or, or the uh, US just to, to be able to, to get even more and, and excel more. Sure. So the people in your community, um, do they look up to you as sort of someone who's, you know, done it and who got out, shined, became an extremely successful entrepreneur, something that you really, you know, you read about in the news and on TechCrunch and all of a sudden you're coming back and do they ask you for advice or how, how do they perceive you? Yeah, well, it's not just me. Like we have a lot of successful entrepreneurs and, and whenever we right, are back right, right. home, uh, uh, a lot of uh, the uh, new startups and, and people who are just experiencing this for the first time or even like a couple times that didn't uh, do well, they always look up to people who have achieved something, especially if you went to Silicon Valley. Like that's the definitely like, prank. But yep. even from uh, if you went to other places and built something, they just ask for advice. They, they try to, to see if what's a good way to travel themselves outside to be able to be successful and to do more things outside. Of course, yeah. no, no, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And so do you often go back and forth? Do, do you get oh, yeah, together I, a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah, I usually go like three times a year. Oh, wow, okay, that's a lot, it's a long flight. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah, I'm, like, from, I'm from Israel, so it's, it's pretty much <laughs> the same amount, of, same amount of hours for a flight. 20 hour flight, usually, yeah. I got used to it, but, but yeah, it's worth it, I think, because you have family there, because you have all your history, food. <laughs> yeah. So lots oh, of yeah. things to look forward to. Yeah. A hundred percent. So Danny, what are you excited about now? There's so much ahead of you. Where, where do you see yourself moving ahead? What gets you excited? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, at some point uh, in the past couple of years, I just realized that uh, this is my life. I'm, I'm always going to be that person starting new companies or, or well actually it's just more of creating values uh, uh, creating value in the world which for me is starting new businesses and, and companies um, and uh, this is what I'm doing also right now like right now we're also uh, since uh, we, we quit with, uh, from Mercari because at the end of the day you want to work on something that you own and, and you love and um, so this is what I, I'm working on right now. And I'm going to be working on for a very long time as well. Of course, of course. And, and any specific industries that you're especially curious about yeah. and that you're, that you're so, enjoying? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm usually open to different industries, especially if there's something new. I, I tried things in, um, in uh, VR, for example, uh, last year. Um, in, uh, like whenever there's something special, crypto or whatever came up, I just want to explore, is there anything that can be built that can help actually, and, and, and also make money at the same time. Um, but I think my, my strong suit is e-commerce. And uh, because I've been in it for 10 years, uh, I yeah. know the ins and outs. And um, also uh, I've been in, in contact with a lot of the bigger competitors as well. So sure. kind of, uh, you want to be indispensable in, in something in the market that you know more than any one other, other person probably in, in the world to be able to build some extra value that nobody is seeing right now. Of course, of course. Danny, uh, 20 minutes is almost up, but I have to ask you uh, <laughs> my last question, which is also my favorite question. Uh, can you tell me three words that you would best describe yourself as or that maybe your co-founder would describe you as? Looks like a, an interview question. Definitely. Like what's, what's your weakest point? I so I'm going to go lot. for the strongest points. Yeah, I care a lot. I work way too hard. I try to yeah. make too much money for the company. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it could be um, uh, ambitious. That's number one. Yeah. Um, it be uh, persistent, like always trying to, to follow things through. And I, I'm probably a geek also. <laughs> I love it. That's the most important one, I think. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Danny, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for, 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 for 
forming this new friendship and I'd love to continue learning from you and it's and and it, say say hi to your co-founder a great great friend of mine and and I wish you all the best on your next ventures thank you so much for having me of course Have take nice care day. take care bye <laughs>